Now we're going to talk about ionization energies required to remove a second, a third, or a fourth electron. So far, so far, typically, ionization energy is referenced to removing a single electron from an atom, making it into a cation with a single positive charge. But it also, we can also figure out how much energy it requires to pull a second electron off, or a third, or a fourth, and so forth. And the amount of energy it takes to do that depends a lot upon which atom it is and where that electron is located. So, let's start off with the uh, atom sodium. Uh, notice sodium has 11 protons in the nucleus and 11 electrons. That means that the 11 electron is now in the third energy level, because the first energy level contains two electrons, the second energy level contains eight, and so the last electron has to move over to the third energy level, and so occupies the S3 orbital, or the 3S orbital. Now, notice that it doesn't take a lot of energy to remove that final electron. So the first ionization energy for sodium is fairly small, 496 kilojoules per mole, or 5.1 electron volts per electron. Not very much, but now to take the second electron away, since that one is now nestled into the second energy level, which is completely filled, so, so once this one is removed and becomes an ion, now the next energy level is completely filled with electrons, and now taking one of those electrons away, that takes an enormous amount of energy, because whenever that, that last uh, shell is filled with electrons, that is a very stable energy state, and to upset that by removing an electron, that requires a lot of energy. Notice the energy it requires is almost 10 times the amount required to take out the first electron. So a very big difference between the first ionization energy and the second ionization energy in the case of sodium. Let's go to the next element on the periodic table, magnesium. Now magnesium has 12 protons and it has 12 electrons. That means it has two electrons in the third energy level. So those three, two electrons fill the 3s orbital. Now the first ionization energy is to remove one of those. Let's just grab this one right here. It takes 738 kilojoules per mole. The reason why it's more than it is for uh, sodium is because this atom is a little bit smaller, this electron is a little bit closer to the nucleus, and therefore it takes a little bit more energy to do so. Notice to take the second electron away, uh, that now requires 1,451 kilojoules per mole, or 15.1 electron volts. Almost double. The reason for that is that once you've taken one of the two electrons away, it's now easier, um, I shouldn't say easier, it, it now the net pull of the nucleus becomes stronger, I should say, as if you remove one electron, now you only have 11 negative charges versus 12 positive charges, so it brings the, the electrons closer to the nucleus, so to take the second one out will require more energy. What about the third one? Now we have the third energy level is now devoid of electrons, you now have magnesium 2 plus, and now you want to take a third electron away. Now that electron is situated on the second energy level, which is much closer to the nucleus than the third energy level. Not only that, there's 12 charges in the center and only 10 electrons now, so that those 12 charges, those positive charges, the nucleus, pull very strongly on those 10 electrons. They're much closer to the nucleus than you would find in sodium, so to take the third one away now, will take an enormous amount of energy, 7,733 kilojoules per mole, or 80 electron volts per electron. That's quite a bit of energy. Again, because once you pull those two electrons away, you have a very stable ion with eight electrons, and that then, that then becomes the valence band of electrons, and very difficult to pull that one out. Let's go to the next one, which is aluminum, right? This is aluminum. It has 13 protons in the nucleus, 13 electrons. The last three are in the third energy level. Notice that two of those three will be in the 3s orbital, and the third one will be in the p orbitals, the three p orbitals, only occupying one of the three orbitals in the p subshell. To pull that first one out doesn't require a lot of energy, only 578 kilojoules per mole, or six electron volts, because it's all by itself in the p orbitals, and that atom will easily let go of that particular electron, so it's easily removed because it's all by itself in the p orbitals. To come then to take a second one out, that becomes a little bit more difficult now because now we're in the 3s orbital and uh, there's 13 positive charges there, so the energy jumps to 1817 kilojoules per mole, and if we then want to take the third one out, which is the second of the 2s orbital electrons, it now jumps to 2745 kilojoules. 
Again, the reason why it takes more energy to take the 2 out of the s orbital than it does here, or the one that takes over there, is because the nuclear charge at the center is stronger and pulling stronger on the, on the electrons in the 3s orbitals. Once those three electrons are gone, notice how much energy it takes to take the fourth electron away. Notice you have a strong positive charge at the center. Those three electrons are now gone, so now there's only 10 electrons left. So to take one of those 10 out of there, it'll be out of the 2p orbitals, takes an enormous amount of energy, 11,580 kilojoules per mole. Again, these orbitals are much closer to the nucleus because the stronger or the higher uh, positive charge there. And therefore, since they're closer, it takes a lot more force to pull them out and therefore a lot more energy. 120 electron volts per electron. So hopefully this really illustrates how the ionization energy is set, not just for the first electron that you want to take out of the atom, but the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and so forth. Anytime you pull out more and more electrons, the ionization energy tends to keep going up because those electrons that you now try to pull out are closer to the nucleus. There's therefore a much stronger uh, pull towards the center because the number of protons is now far greater than the number of electrons as you pull more and more electrons out and the pull to the nucleus becomes stronger and therefore it takes a lot more energy, a lot more force to take those electrons away. So hopefully that's a good illustration for you and you get a better understanding of why we have second, third, and fourth ionization energies and so forth uh, based upon the number of protons at the center and based on the number of electrons you're trying to remove.